By committing to support and champion the principles set here in for gender equality, we are actually telling the world that we are ready to nurture and help release the potential, both known and, and hidden, of the woman and the man in Kenya equally. UN Women and the UN Global Compact launched the WEBS in 2010 with the aim of encouraging businesses to advance gender equality and empowerment of women. Our objective is to deepen, to broaden and to strengthen our private sector engagement to help shift behaviours for gender responsive business conduct. Tambic Bank Kenya enters a global network of like-minded companies and through the Women's Empowerment Principles platform will receive guidance on advancing gender equality and women's empowerment in the workplace, the marketplace and the community. When COVID happened, a lot of people, if I use a vernacular word, ate the capital. When the economy reopened, they did not have the capital to start up. What we're doing is giving them small loans, which are actually at 0% interest, minus an administration fee, for them to restart their businesses. And the idea is you create a community where you get the money, you start your businesses, you pay back that money, but you don't pay interest on it. So the other people can also access that money. But over and above that, we're also offering training in partnership with Microsoft, what we call Future Need Digital, to support them get new skills from a digital perspective. We're also offering uh, what you call uh, financial literacy, which is, which is fact how do we empower you to start understanding what you're trying to do? But the other thing that we're also doing as a bank is that we want to support women by buying from women. And what we have done is to train women in how to access tenders and how to respond to RFPs as part of this program. In achieving this feat, the overriding purpose, which we have taken great pride on as Standing, is Kenya and South Sudan are our homes and we drive their growth. By committing to support and champion the principles set here in for gender equality, we are actually telling the world that we are ready to nurture and help release the potential, both known and, and hidden, of the woman and the man in Kenya equally. UN Women and the UN Global Compact launched the WEBS in 2010 with the aim of encouraging businesses to advance gender equality and empowerment of women. Our objective is to deepen, to broaden and to strengthen our private sector engagement to help shift behaviours for gender responsive business conduct. Tambic Bank Kenya enters a global network of like-minded companies and through the Women's Empowerment Principles platform will receive guidance on advancing gender equality and women's empowerment in the workplace, the marketplace and the community. When COVID happened, a lot of people, if I use a vernacular word, ate the capital. When the economy reopened, they did not have the capital to start up. What we're doing is giving them small loans, which are actually at 0% interest, minus an administration fee, for them to restart their businesses. And the idea is you create a community where you get the money, you start your businesses, you pay back that money, but you don't pay interest on it. So the other people can also access that money. But over and above that, we're also offering training in partnership with Microsoft, what we call Future Need Digital, to support them get new skills from a digital perspective. We're also offering uh, what we call uh, financial literacy, which is, which is effective how do we empower you to start understanding what you're trying to do but the other thing that we're also doing as a bank is that we want to support women by buying from women and what we have done is to train women in how to access tenders and how to respond to RFPs as part of this program. In achieving this feat the overriding purpose which we have taken great pride on as Standing, is Kenya and South Sudan are our homes and we drive their growth. By committing to support and champion the principles set here in for gender equality, we are actually telling the world that we are ready to nurture and help release the potential, both known and, and hidden, of the woman and the man in Kenya equally. UN Women and the UN Global Compact launched the WEBS in 2010 with the aim of encouraging businesses to advance gender equality and empowerment of women. 
Our objective is to deepen, to broaden and to strengthen our private sector engagement to help shift behaviours for gender responsive business conduct. Stambik Bank Kenya enters a global network of like-minded companies and through the Women's Empowerment Principles platform will receive guidance on advancing gender equality and women's empowerment in the workplace, the marketplace and the community. When COVID happened, a lot of people, if I use a vernacular word, ate the capital. When the economy reopened, they did not have the capital to start up. What we're doing is giving them small loans, which are actually at 0% interest, minus an administration fee, for them to restart their businesses. And the idea is you create a community where you get the money, you start your businesses, you pay back that money, but you don't pay interest on it. So the other people can also access that money. But over and above that, we're also offering training in partnership with Microsoft, what we call Future and Digital, to support them get new skills from a digital perspective. We're also offering uh, what you call um, financial literacy, which is, which is factive how do we empower you to start understanding what you're trying to do but the other thing that also doing as a bank is that we want to support women by buying from women and what we have done is to train women in how to access tenders and how to respond to RFPs as part of this program. In achieving this feat the overriding purpose which we have taken great pride on as Stanbic is Kenya and South Sudan are our homes and we drive their growth. By committing to support and champion the principles set here in for gender equality, we are actually telling the world that we are ready to nurture and help release the potential, both known and, and hidden, of the woman and the man in Kenya equally. UN Women and the UN Global Compact launched the WEBS in 2010 with the aim of encouraging businesses to advance gender equality and empowerment of women. Our objective is to deepen, to broaden, and to strengthen our private sector engagement to help shift behaviors for gender responsive business conduct. Stambik Bank Kenya enters a global network of like minded companies, and through the Women's Empowerment Principles platform, will receive guidance on advancing gender equality and women's empowerment in the workplace, the marketplace, and the community. When COVID happened, a lot of people, if I use a vernacular word, ate the capital. When the economy reopened, they did not have the capital to start up. What we're doing is giving them small loans, which are actually at 0% interest, minus an administration fee, for them to restart their businesses. And the idea is you create a community where you get the money, you start your businesses, you pay back that money, but you don't pay interest on it. So the other people can also access that money. But over and above that, we're also offering training in partnership with Microsoft, what we call Future and Digital, to support them get new skills from a digital perspective. We're also offering uh, what you call um, financial literacy, which is, which is factive how do we empower you to start understanding what you're trying to do but the other thing that also doing as a bank is that we want to support women by buying from women and what we have done is to train women in how to access tenders and how to respond to RFPs as part of this program. In achieving this feat the overriding purpose which we have taken great pride on as Stanbic is Kenya and South Sudan are our homes and we drive their growth. In 2021, the COVID-19 pandemic pressed on and challenged us to find new ways to make the dreams of our customers possible. Stanbic Bank, through the Stanbic Kenya Foundation, set out to launch a number of initiatives that would significantly impact Kenyans and stimulate the economy. Partnerships were called to how the foundation initiatives were rolled out. At a national level, the foundation signed an MOU with the Ministry of Trade, Industrialization and Enterprise Development as we sought to leverage public-private partnerships to enhance the country's development agenda. Further to this, four county partnerships and two bilateral partnerships were sealed via MOUs that would enable us to support micro and small enterprises through various initiatives. 
Under the Job Creation and Enterprise Development Pillar, key learning initiatives were rolled out through the Accelerate program. Over 50,000 micro and small entrepreneurs received digital skills training as well as business resilience training that would help them position themselves and their businesses better. To support the trainings, a total number of 430 computers and laptops were donated to various institutions and government agencies that work with small and medium enterprises. We also sought to give more entrepreneurs access to financial solutions through catalytic funding that would help drive inclusive growth. Through Stanbic Kenya Foundation's Accelerate program, we partnered with the United States Africa Development Foundation USADF, to fast-track entrepreneurial growth by empowering and investing in SMEs. Out of over 500 participants, seven finalists were awarded with up to 5 million shillings in grant funding. GIZ were also on board to sign off an MOU that would allow us to forge a strategic partnership agreement to promote the growth and development of Kenya. This partnership will see us work closely with the select five counties in the first phase of the program. According to the World Health Organization, cancer remains the leading cause of death worldwide and the third leading cause of death in Kenya. In partnership with Population Service Kenya, we set out to create awareness on the early detection of breast and cervical cancer in order to help reduce the number of deaths. Over 10,000 women were screened in the year 2021. Those with suspected cases were cancelled and referred to various hospitals for further treatment. The whole aspect around how we live purpose is to say when some, some place is your home, you take care of your home and taking care of your home is taking care of its people. And I actually do think the initiative of cancer screening is really a demonstration that we are taking care of our people and we are also taking care of our customers very proudly wearing my pink bow um, and actually very proud of the work of the foundation and the bank is doing um, specifically on cancer screening. The foundation also played a key role in the fight against COVID and in partnership with the Kenya Health Federation distributed PPEs across the country to support our frontline workers in various health facilities. At Stanbic Bank, driving Kenya's growth is at the core of everything we do. And together with our partners and our clients, we drive the growth of Kenya. We're a nation of dreamers, believing in our dreams. Ola Energy is a Pan-African company. It is present in 17 countries in Africa. Currently in Kenya, actually, we're looking to grow from 100 to over 120 sites by the end of this year. We are also looking to grow our lubricant business. We are in partnership with ExxonMobil. Our main vision is to have African-born prosperity. So we would like to work with our citizens and generally African people to grow themselves. We have been in operation for four years. I just chose to invest in this venture because I got some interest in the fuller industry. I ended up merging with Ola. By then it was Oil Libya. They promised to give us finance and the margin, the business margin for the fuel was better than the rest. Because of these pandemics and all that, we somehow got short with funds. Oil Libya, after coming in and after discussing with their financial experts, they talked of Stanbic and they talked of financial support and we accept it. One of the challenges that we found based on the engagements we had with Ola Energy was the ability to get their dealers to access product at an affordable price in a timely manner. So what we've done as a bank is that we've come up with a solution which we're calling MJK, where we give their dealers an opportunity to access funding. When the economic times are hard, there are those business partners who would treat you with the caution. They can see opportunities where other people may not see. What you want as a business person is a partner who wants to tell them their problems. They tell you you can relax, I have a solution for you. And that for us is Stanbic Bank. The best thing is that they've gone above and beyond 
just all like energy, they've now gone to our partners as well. So they're able to provide solutions for our partners, particularly the, our dealers that run our service stations, because our business really is based on what the dealers do. So if the dealer business grows, our business grows. We use data to analyze a dealer, and based on that information, we are able to allocate limits to the specific dealer. Once these limits are located, the dealer is able to obtain funding, which they then use to get products from Ola Energy. Once the dealer is uh, onboarded, they're able to access it either through their phone or um, their laptop, because it's uh, an online solution. We have not had dry periods because financing is easier. Customers are becoming comfortable with us and relying on us. At Stanbic, we consider Africa as our home. We drive our growth. We are keen on understanding your business so that we can be able to provide tailor-made solutions to address your challenges. SMEs are key players in the economy. A lot of SMEs, they start, but they never grow. How do we support these entrepreneurs to also access other markets? What we are doing, we believe, is actually advancing Kenya's national development plan. Stanbic Bank made a commitment to growing the economy by giving micro, small and medium-sized businesses a leg up so they too can scale up. This is through the Accelerate program, a partnership between Stanbic Bank and USADF. The whole idea of the Accelerate program is that having created the foundation, we realized we needed a solution that actually goes into the market. We wanted to focus on small businesses, or SMEs as they're called, and we wanted to give them an opportunity to grow. Stanbic's Accelerate program is a program that uh has been designed to support the growth of uh, micro, small and medium enterprises. This partnership is actually opening new frontiers for these SMEs so that they can achieve their full potential. From our first cohort in 2021, seven businesses were awarded grants of up to 5 million shillings. This is the amount our second cohort applicants are eyeing. And the first one was quite exciting. I think we got 500 applicants. I think this one we've got about 437 applicants that have come in, but we ended up in 47 because the quality is so good. There was very good uh, representation of the young people, young people who are doing very, very innovative uh, businesses. The number one problem that businesses commonly face, most of them have a poor governance structure. If you look at uh, the common thinking that a typical SME will have, is that for me to access finance, I need to go to you know the formal institutions. Some of them don't actually know or are sensitized that you can actually have alternative sources of financing, such as grants, you know, impact investors that are actually able to finance you without collateral. For us, it's not merely about handing business financing and letting go. We walk with them and pass on the knowledge that gives them the upper hand. This is a very good initiative that uh, Stanbic Bank is doing because it's helping companies like us to at least expand and also try to see how we can work with the local people to improve on their livelihood. A lot of SMEs, they start, but they never grow. So Accelerator is a vehicle and a platform that allows SMEs to grow through funding, through access to markets, and lastly, through provision of knowledge. We see a cross range from startups that have picked up an idea, seen an opportunity, seen a gap, and used it and leveraged and actually grown to be a very profitable business. The biggest strength that a Kenyan entrepreneur has is resilience. While everybody else is crying that COVID killed their business, five contestants that you reviewed built their business from scratch during COVID. The judging criteria, we're using one, how well they know their business. The other thing we are looking at is, are they willing to match the grant with their own cash or the in kind? And then we're also looking at, are they able to have a business growth plan? Are they willing to go for other investments besides grants? And lastly, we are looking at the way they present. A couple of the ideas and the presentations we saw, particularly in the agri-tech, are scalable. Even as we look at supporting some of these businesses, is to see 
through our group network because we are the largest Pan-African bank, how do we support these entrepreneurs to also access other markets? Because as a bank, we go beyond financing. The other thing that we do is to actually enable our customers to have access to markets. Our goal being to grow the various industries in tandem with these smaller businesses that have great impact on the country's and region's economy. The commitment that USADF has to SMEs and entrepreneurship in general is 100% because this is why we were set up. We would like to see SMEs grow. We would like to see SMEs create employment for young people, women. We would like to see SMEs providing goods and services closer to where the communities are. We would like to see these SMEs providing opportunities for people to secure their livelihoods. SMEs drive about 70% of the economy. So if we're able to impact the 70% portion of the economy, then we'll certainly be driving the growth of Kenya. At Stand Big Bank, we believe that Kenya is our home and we drive her growth. We really have big, ambitious goals for this fund, that it actually becomes a strong fund which can support SMEs and walk them through this journey. We're looking in the next year or two to raise at least close to $100 million to support this program. SMEs are key players in the economy. A lot of SMEs, they start, but they never grow. How do we support these entrepreneurs to also access other markets? What we are doing, we believe, is actually advancing Kenya's national development plan. Stanbic Bank made a commitment to growing the economy by giving micro, small and medium-sized businesses a leg up so they too can scale up. This is through the Accelerate program, a partnership between Stanbic Bank and USADF. The whole idea of the Accelerate program is that having created the foundation, we realized we needed a solution that actually goes into the market. We wanted to focus on small businesses, or SMEs as they are called, and we wanted to give them an opportunity to grow. Stanbic's Accelerate program is a program that uh has been designed to support the growth of micro, small and medium enterprises. This partnership is actually opening new frontiers for these SMEs so that they can achieve their full potential. From our first cohort in 2021, seven businesses were awarded grants of up to 5 million shillings. This is the amount our second cohort applicants are eyeing. And the first one was very exciting. I think we got 500 applicants. I think this one we've got about 437 applicants that have come in, but we ended up in 47 because the quality is so good. There was very good uh, representation of young people, young people who are doing very, very innovative uh, businesses. The number one problem that businesses commonly face, most of them have a poor governance structure. If you look at uh, the common thinking that a typical SME will have, is that for me to access finance, I need to go to you know the formal institutions. Some of them don't actually know or are sensitized that you can actually have alternative sources of financing, such as grants, you know, impact investors that are actually able to finance you without collateral. For us, it's not merely about handing business financing and letting go. We walk with them and pass on the knowledge that gives them the upper hand. This is a very good initiative that uh, Stanbic Bank is doing because it's helping companies like us to at least expand and also try to see how we can work with the local people to improve on their livelihood. A lot of SMEs, they start, but they never grow. So Accelerator is a vehicle, a platform that allows SMEs to grow through funding, through access to markets, and lastly, through provision of knowledge. We see a cross range from startups that have picked up an idea, seen an opportunity, seen a gap, and used it and leveraged and actually grown to be a very profitable business. The biggest strength that a Kenyan entrepreneur has is resilience. While everybody else is crying that COVID killed their business, five contestants that we reviewed built their business from scratch during COVID. The judging criteria, we're using one, how well they know their business. The other thing we are looking at is, are they willing to match the grant with their own cash, 
or the in kind and then we're also looking at are they able to have a business growth plan are they willing to go for other investments besides grants and lastly we are looking at the way they present a couple of the ideas and the presentations we saw particularly in the agritech are scalable even as we look at supporting some of these businesses is to see through our group network because we are the largest pan-african bank how do we support these entrepreneurs to also access other markets because as a bank we go beyond financing the other thing that we do is to actually enable our customers to have access to markets. Our goal being to grow the various industries in tandem with these smaller businesses that have great impact on the country's and region's economy. The commitment that USADF has to SMEs and entrepreneurship in general is 100% because this is why we were set up. We would like to see SMEs grow. We would like to see SMEs create employment for young people, women. We would like to see SMEs providing goods and services closer to where the communities are. We would like to see these SMEs providing opportunities for people to secure their livelihoods. SMEs drive about 70% of the economy. So if we're able to impact the 70% portion of the economy, then we'll certainly be driving the growth of Kenya. At Stand Big Bank, we believe that Kenya is our home and we drive her growth. We really have big, ambitious goals for this fund that it actually becomes a strong fund which can support SMEs and walk them through this journey. We're looking in the next year or two to raise at least close to $100 million to support this program. SMEs are key players in the economy. A lot of SMEs, they start, but they never grow. How do we support these entrepreneurs to also access other markets? What we are doing, we believe, is actually advancing Kenya's national development plan. Stanbic Bank made a commitment to growing the economy by giving micro, small and medium-sized businesses a leg up so they too can scale up. This is through the Accelerate program, a partnership between Stanbic Bank and USADF. The whole idea of the Accelerate program is that having created the foundation, we realized we needed a solution that actually goes into the market. We wanted to focus on small businesses, or SMEs as they are called, and we wanted to give them an opportunity to grow. Stanbic's Accelerate program is a program that uh has been designed to support the growth of micro, small and medium enterprises. This partnership is actually opening new frontiers for these SMEs so that they can achieve their full potential. From our first cohort in 2021, seven businesses were awarded grants of up to 5 million shillings. This is the amount our second cohort applicants are eyeing. And the first one was very exciting. I think we got 500 applicants. I think this one has got about 437 applicants that have come in, but we ended up in 47 because the quality is so good. There was very good uh, representation of the young people, young people who are doing very, very innovative uh, businesses. The number one problem that businesses commonly face, most of them have a poor governance structure. If you look at uh, the common thinking that a typical SME will have, is that for me to access finance, I need to go to you know the formal institutions. Some of them don't actually know or are sensitized that you can actually have alternative sources of financing, such as grants, you know, impact investors that are actually able to finance you without collateral. For us, it's not merely about handing business financing and letting go. We walk with them and pass on the knowledge that gives them the upper hand. This is a very good initiative that uh, Stanbic Bank is doing because it's helping companies like us to at least expand and also try to see how we can work with the local people to improve on their livelihood. A lot of SMEs, they start, but they never grow. So Accelerator is a vehicle, a platform that allows SMEs to grow through funding, through access to markets, and lastly, through provision of knowledge. We see a cross range from startups that have picked up an idea, seen an opportunity, seen a gap, 
and used it and leveraged and actually grown to be a very profitable business. The biggest strength that a Kenyan entrepreneur has is resilience. While everybody else is crying that COVID killed their business, five contestants that we reviewed built their business from scratch during COVID. The judging criteria, we're using one, how well they know their business. The other thing we are looking at is, are they willing to match the grant with their own cash or the in kind? And then we're also looking at, are they able to have a business growth plan? Are they willing to go for other investments besides grants? And lastly, we are looking at the way they present. A couple of the ideas and the presentations we saw, particularly in the agri-tech, are scalable. Even as we look at supporting some of these businesses, is to see through our group network, because we are the largest Pan-African bank, how do we support these entrepreneurs to also access other markets? Because as a bank, we go beyond financing. The other thing that we do is to actually enable our customers to have access to markets. Our goal being to grow the various industries in tandem with these smaller businesses that have great impact on the country's and region's economy. The commitment that USADF has to SMEs and entrepreneurship in general is 100% because this is why we were set up. We would like to see SMEs grow. We would like to see SMEs create employment for young people, women. We would like to see SMEs providing goods and services closer to where the communities are. We would like to see these SMEs providing opportunities for people to secure their livelihoods. SMEs drive about 70% of the economy. So if we're able to impact the 70% portion of the economy, then we'll certainly be driving the growth of Kenya. At Stand Big Bank, we believe that Kenya is our home and we drive her growth. We really have big, ambitious goals for this fund that it actually becomes a strong fund which can support SMEs and walk them through this journey. We're looking in the next year or two to raise at least close to $100 million to support this program. In 2021, the COVID-19 pandemic pressed on and challenged us to find new ways to make the dreams of our customers possible. Stanbic Bank, through the Stanbic Kenya Foundation, set out to launch a number of initiatives that would significantly impact Kenyans and stimulate the economy. Partnerships were called to how the foundation initiatives were rolled out. At a national level, the foundation signed an MOU with the Ministry of Trade, Industrialization and Enterprise Development as we sought to leverage public-private partnerships to enhance the country's development agenda. Further to this, four county partnerships and two bilateral partnerships were sealed via MOUs that would enable us to support micro and small enterprises through various initiatives. Under the Job Creation and Enterprise Development Pillar, Key learning initiatives were rolled out through the Accelerate program. Over 50,000 micro and small entrepreneurs received digital skills training as well as business resilience training that would help them position themselves and their businesses better. To support the trainings, a total number of 430 computers and laptops were donated to various institutions and government agencies that work with small and medium enterprises. We also sought to give more entrepreneurs access to financial solutions through catalytic funding that would help drive inclusive growth. Through Stanbic Kenya Foundation's Accelerate program, we partnered with the United States Africa Development Foundation, USADF, to fast-track entrepreneurial growth by empowering and investing in SMEs. Out of over 500 participants, seven finalists were awarded with up to 5 million shillings in grant funding. GIZ were also on board to sign off an MOU that would allow us to forge a strategic partnership agreement to promote the growth and development of Kenya. This partnership will see us work closely with the select five counties in the first phase of the program. According to the World Health Organization, 
Cancer remains the leading cause of death worldwide and the third leading cause of death in Kenya. In partnership with Population Service Kenya, we set out to create awareness on the early detection of breast and cervical cancer in order to help reduce the number of deaths. Over 10,000 women were screened in the year 2021. Those with suspected cases were cancelled and referred to various hospitals for further treatment. The whole aspect around how we live purpose is to say when some some place is your home you take care of your home and taking care of your home is taking care of its people and I actually do think the initiative of cancer screening is really a demonstration that we are taking care of our people and we're also taking care of our customers. Very proudly wearing my pink bow um, and actually very proud of the work of the foundation and the bank is doing um, specifically on cancer screening. The foundation also played a key role in the fight against COVID and in partnership with the Kenya Health Federation distributed PPEs across the country to support our frontline workers in various health facilities. At Stanbic Bank, driving Kenya's growth is at the core of everything we do. And together with our partners and our clients, we drive the growth of Kenya. of dreamers believing in our dreams all our energy is a pan-african company it is present in 17 countries in africa currently in kenya actually we're looking to grow from 100 to over 120 sites by the end of this year we are also looking to grow our lubricant business. We are in partnership with ExxonMobil. Our main vision is to have African-born prosperity. So we would like to work with our citizens and generally African people to grow themselves. We have been operation for four years. I just chose to invest in this venture because I got some interest in foreign industry. I ended up merging with Ola. By then it was Oilibia. They promised to give us finance and the margin, the business margin for the fuel was better than the rest. Because of these pandemics and all that, we somehow got short with funds. Oil Libya, after coming in and after discussing with their financial experts, they talked of Stanbic and they talked of uh, financial support and we accept it. One of the challenges that we found based on the engagements we had with Ola Energy was the ability to get their dealers to access product at an affordable price in a timely manner. So what we've done as a bank is that we've come up with a solution which we're calling MJK, where we give their dealers an opportunity to access funding. When the economic times are hard, there are those business partners who would treat you with the caution. They can see opportunities where other people may not see. What you want as a business person is a partner who wants to tell them their problems. They tell you you can relax, I have a solution for you. And that for us is done with Bank. The best thing is that they've gone above and beyond just all like energy, they've now gone to our partners as well. So they're able to provide solutions for our partners, particularly the, our dealers that run our service stations, because our business really is based on what the dealers do. So if the dealer business grows, our business grows. We use data to analyze a dealer, and based on that information, we are able to allocate limits to the specific dealer. Once these limits are located, the dealer is able to obtain funding, which they then use to get products from Ola Energy. Once the dealer is uh, onboarded, they're able to access it either through their phone or um, their laptop, because it's uh, an online solution. We have not had dry periods, because financing is easier customers are becoming comfortable with us and relying on us. At Stanbic we consider Africa as our home, we drive our growth, we are keen on understanding your business so that we can be able to provide tailor-made solutions to address your challenges.
SMEs are key players in the economy. A lot of SMEs, they start, but they never grow. How do we support these entrepreneurs to also access other markets? What we are doing, we believe, is actually advancing Kenya's national development plan. Stanbic Bank made a commitment to growing the economy by giving micro, small and medium-sized businesses a leg up so they too can scale up. This is through the Accelerate program, a partnership between Stanbic Bank and USADF. The whole idea of the Accelerate program is that having created the foundation, we realized we needed a solution that actually goes into the market. We wanted to focus on small businesses or SMEs as they are called and we wanted to give them an opportunity to grow. Stambix Accelerated Program is a program that uh, has been designed to support the growth of uh, micro, small and medium enterprises. This partnership is actually opening new frontiers for these SMEs so that they can achieve their full potential. From our first cohort in 2021, seven businesses were awarded grants of up to 5 million shillings. This is the amount our second cohort applicants are eyeing. And the first one was quite exciting. I think we got 500 applicants. I think this one we've got about 437 applicants that have come in. But we ended up in 47 because the quality is so good. There was very good uh, representation of the young people. Young people who are doing very, very innovative uh, businesses. The number one problem that businesses commonly face most of them have a poor governance structure. If you look at uh, the common thinking that a typical SME will have, is that for me to access finance, I need to go to you know the formal institutions. Some of them don't actually know or are sensitized that you can actually have alternative sources of financing, such as grants, you know, impact investors that are actually able to finance you without collateral. For us. It's not merely about handing business financing and letting go. We walk with them and pass on the knowledge that gives them the upper hand. This is a very good initiative that uh, Stanbic Bank is doing because it's helping companies like us to at least expand and also try to see how we can work with the local people to improve on their livelihood. A lot of SMEs, they start, but they never grow. So Accelerator is a vehicle, a platform that allows SMEs to grow through funding, through access to markets, and lastly, through provision of knowledge. We see a cross range from startups that have picked up an idea, seen an opportunity, seen a gap, and used it and leveraged and actually grown. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I can see we are enjoying our breakfast. Apologies for running a little late. We are giving time for our chief guest to be able to join us. He will be here shortly, and then we can start our official program. For now, continue networking and enjoying your breakfast. Are they willing to match the grant with their own cash or the in kind? And then we're also looking at, are they able to have a business growth plan? Are they willing to go for other investments besides grants? And lastly, we are looking at the way they present. A couple of the ideas and the presentations we saw, particularly in the agri-tech, are scalable. Even as we look at supporting some of these businesses, is to see through our group network, because we are the largest Pan-African bank, how do we support these entrepreneurs to also access other markets? Because as a bank, we go beyond financing. The other thing that we do is to actually enable our customers to have access to markets. Our goal being, to grow the various industries in tandem with these smaller businesses that have great impact on the country's and region's economy. The commitment that USADF has to SMEs and entrepreneurship in general is 100% because this is why we were set up. We would like to see SMEs grow. We would like to see SMEs create employment for young people, women. We would like to see SMEs providing goods and services closer to where the communities are. We would like to see these SMEs providing opportunities for people to secure their livelihoods. SMEs drive about 70% of the economy. So if we're able to impact the 70% portion of the economy, then we'll certainly be driving the growth of Kenya. At Stand Big Bank, we believe that Kenya is our home and we drive her growth.
we really have big ambitious goals for this fund that it actually becomes a strong fund which can support SMEs and walk them through this journey. We are looking in the next year or two to raise at least close to $100 million to support this program. By committing to support and champion the principles set here in for gender equality, we are actually telling the world that we are ready to nurture and help release the potential, both known and, and hidden, of the woman and the man in Kenya equally. UN Women and the UN Global Compact launched the WEBS in 2010 with the aim of encouraging businesses to advance gender equality and the empowerment of women. Our objective is to deepen, to broaden and to strengthen our private sector engagement to help shift behaviours for gender responsive business conduct. Tambic Bank Kenya enters a global network of like-minded companies and through the Women's Empowerment Principles platform will receive guidance on advancing gender equality and women's empowerment in the workplace, the marketplace and the community. When COVID happened, a lot of people, if I use a vernacular word, ate the capital. When the economy reopened, they did not have the capital to start up. What we're doing is giving them small loans, which are actually at 0% interest, minus an administration fee, for them to restart their businesses. And the idea is you create a community where you get the money, you start your businesses, you pay back that money, but you don't pay interest on it. So the other people can also access that money. But over and above that, we're also offering training in partnership with Microsoft, what we call Future and Digital, to support them get new skills from a digital perspective. We're also offering uh, what you call uh, financial literacy, which is, which is fact how do we empower you to start understanding what you're trying to do? But the other thing that we're also doing as a bank is that we want to support women by buying from women. And what we have done is to train women in how to access tenders and how to respond to RFPs as part of this program. In achieving this feat, the overriding purpose, which we have taken great pride on as Stanbic, is Kenya and South Sudan are our homes and we drive their growth. In 2021, the COVID-19 pandemic pressed on and challenged us to find new ways to make the dreams of our customers possible. Stanbic Bank, through the Stanbic Kenya Foundation, set out to launch a number of initiatives that would significantly impact Kenyans and stimulate the economy. Partnerships were called to how the foundation initiatives were rolled out. At the national level, the foundation signed an MOU with the Ministry of Trade, Industrialization and Enterprise Development as we sought to leverage public-private partnerships to enhance the country's development agenda. Further to this, four county partnerships and two bilateral partnerships were sealed via MOUs that would enable us to support micro and small enterprises through various initiatives. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience. We will now start our official program. For those of us joining us online, thank you again for your patience. Uh, those of us who have been in the room and as well as online, you have seen some videos that were playing just to start giving you a feel of what this morning is all about. Uh, my name is Faith Moara. I'm going to be your moderator for the day. Uh, and to get us started, we need to um, get a briefing from the hotel. And I'm going to invite Nicholas, who is in charge of health and safety here at Fairmont, to just prepare us or rather let us know what we need to prepare for. Karibu. Uh, good morning to you. My name is Nicholas. I'm security officer at the Fairmont. First of all, I want to say thank you and I welcome you at the Fairmont and thank you for choosing the Fairmont as your meeting place. First of all, I want to give you the destination of our hotel. Our hotel is located between the KBC, which is the state broadcast, and the Central Police Station or the Nairobi University. So in terms of, in terms of security, we are much secure because in even any small protest, you can't know unless you are told. 
because no one dares come to this place, because we have a paramilitary at the KBC and the police station over there. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. Yeah, like today, we are not planning any fire drill or any alarm testing. So in case of emergency, just walk through the door, straight outside, just gently to the fire assembly point, which is the, at the courtyard. You have a courtyard at the center of the hotel. In case of a large uh, outburst, then we can cross over to the cultural center. Today, I believe you are going to enjoy the meeting because uh, we are COVID-19 compliant. You can see the dispensers all over for the sanitizer. So in case uh, you feel like dispensing, just go ahead. And then we have cleaning going on around. So just take precautions, make sure you are spacing as per the protocols. We have our washrooms just adjusting to the ballroom or to the meeting place. We also have uh, the disabled next to the washrooms. Again, uh, in case of a medical emergency, we have a clinical officer with a clinic at the hotel. But uh, also we have a doctor on call in case of a request. So you are much welcome. And I think uh, because of the quickness you have, any question or any clarification, you can go ahead. Are you good to go? Yes. Karibuni sana and say thank you for choosing the Fairmont. Asante sana. All right, thank you very much, Nicholas. There you have it. We are safe and we are good to start. So ladies and gentlemen, allow me to say another welcome to you. I, indeed, it's a beautiful day. The sun is out. It's not as chilly as we thought it would be. This is a special event for us, and we are quite excited to unveil our third annual report to society. And before I go further, allow me to recognize the presence of the people in the room. Our chief guest who will be joining us shortly, Honorable David Osiani, Administrative Secretary, Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development. Our chief executive, Kenya and South Sudan, are Mr. Charles Mudiwa. Our board members, our executive leadership and staff are in Kenya and South Sudan. Investors, I recognize the presence of the CEO of Nairobi Stock Exchange, Karibu Sana. We have our partners, we have our customers, we have members from this uh, fourth estate. Ladies and gentlemen, Karibuni Sana. Today we get to unveil the 2021 Report to Society, which is a communication of the strategic outcomes we have achieved in each of the sustainability pillars that social, economic, and environmental impact areas. We believe that it is important for our stakeholders to have a holistic understanding of the impact that we generate. By doing this, we get to deepen the relationships we share with our clients as well as the community at large. And because we believe that Kenya is our home and we drive her growth. South Sudan is also our home and we drive her growth. What makes today even special is the fact that we will be highlighting how we are sparring the growth of entrepreneurship in Kenya. We have partnered with the United States African Development Foundation to provide grants that will enable small businesses, cooperatives, and producer groups to meet their business financing needs affordably. Today, we will announce our second cohort winners who are in the house from the competition that we held in April this year. So ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, allow me to welcome our first speaker, our chief risk officer, who is also the custodian of the bank's social, economic, and the environmental execution strategy, Mr. Edwin Mushai, who will thereafter invite our chief guest, our chief executive. So ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together as we welcome Mr. Mushai. Um, my name is Edwin Moshai, as you've heard. I'm responsible for, for risk in the bank. And for those who probably don't know what risk is, is the team that uh, approves credit in the main, amongst other things. 
I am also responsible for the socio-economic and environmental agenda uh, for the bank. And we do this because it is at the core of our strategy and it's how we live our purpose, as my colleague Faith has mentioned. Allow me to recognize some of the guests that are sitting amongst you. Um, our chi the Chief Administrative Secretary, who is uh, going to join us shortly. Uh, we have our Chief Exec, Mr. Charles Mudiwa, who is going to come and speak after me. We have a number of our board members here uh, who have also joined us. And thank you very much for making the time. Pauline Bayer, who is not a stranger to any of us here. She heads the foundation. Some of my colleagues in S Exco who have uh, also joined us. Uh, the CEO of the uh, Nairobi uh, Securities Exchange and a good friend of the bank. Esteemed partners, representatives from, uh, uh, other representatives from Sanbi, Kenya, members of the Fourth Estate, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to spend the next few minutes just really talking to why this is so important to us. And I'll start by saying, so, so why, for example, do we do this? We do this because we want to demonstrate how we have driven the C agenda against each of the pillars of socio-economic and environmental impact areas. This report to society for 2021, and as you've heard, it's the third one, outlines our activities as guided by our seven pillars, which are job creation, enterprise development, where we will talk a lot about of what we've done in the last year, infrastructure, the bank is involved in financing the infrastructure growth that we've seen under the big uh, uh, four agenda, trade and investment, climate change, sustainable finance, education, and health. Through this report, we measure our impact, the areas of impact, and determine areas that may need more investment, both at a macro and micro level, in alignment with the UN um, Sustainable Development Goals. The impact of, of this uh, standing partnerships. So actually, the way we approach this is primarily through partnerships and working with others who are similarly focused on making this world a better place than, than, than we found it. As a bank, we can only do so much on our own. We understand that meaningful partnerships with both the government and other like-minded private sector players is key to achieving these ambitious goals. Awarding the second cohort of winners of the USADF and Stanbic Foundation grant today is an example of the partnerships we are creating under enterprise development uh, pillar. Through this partnership, we have provided grants worth 107 million so far to micro SMEs, cooperatives, producer groups, and producer groups in Kenya. This grant affords recipients access to affordable finance and additionally access to markets and capacity building. And I think at the end of today, you will see some of the winners uh, come to the front and, and, and actually get uh, recognized. This bank has also partnered with the government of Kenya through the Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development together with the counties of Mombasa, Nakuru, Kisumu, Laikipia, and Kericho. Areas of collaboration include supporting the government's trade negotiations, capacity building, and enterprise development of MSMEs. Access to finance and access to markets. The capacity building program targets 50,000 trainees, an additional 1,000 trainers uh, through the Future New Digital Initiatives, where we partner with uh, Microsoft. As part of the public-private uh, partnership, Stanbic and the Ministry of, of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development has further rolled out the initiative of MOU signed with the counties of Nairo Nakuru, Laikipia, Mombasa, Meru, Kisumu, Kericho, and Wasingishu. We've also partnered with GIZ, who have also joined us today, with the aim of accelerating business recovery and growth of small enterprises. The 62 million shilling project seeks to support MSMEs to respond, restore, and rebound from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The partnership is under the Employment and Skills for Development in Africa, 4ED program, commissioned by the German Federal Ministry uh, for Economic Cooperation and Development and implemented by GIZ and Stanbic Foundation in Kenya. We have worked with the national government development finance institutions, and other commercial banks to finance large-scale infrastructure projects to address Kenya's uh, infrastructure deficit and enable inclusive and indus uh, sustainable industrialization. 
To this end, we partnered the Kenya Department of Roads to launch the Pioneering Road Annuity Program. This partnership is expected to produce 5,000 kilometers of new road um, across Kenya. You probably don't know this, some of you probably don't know this, but Stanbic Bank provided uh, the performance guarantees that uh, supported the, the, the expressway, and we are the banker of the company that is uh, operating the expressway. On climate change, we've partnered with key stakeholders to facilitate access to affordable and clean energy. Stanbic is supporting companies that are seeking to diversify their power sources to reduce cost and enhance reliability. So where do we go from here? We continue to make progress in driving impact by applying industry-leading solutions to accelerate sustainable growth. Additionally, through our trade and investment pillar, we have facilitated domestic and cross-border trade as an avenue of creating opportunities in the effort to reduce poverty in East Africa through our UNAIO solution, which we also plan to roll out across the continent. And this is actually part of our group initiative to bank uh, some of these enterprises across the continent. Uh, and you also probably know that Sana Bank Group is the largest uh, bank on the continent. We impact, the impact we have had over the past year has been a key catalyst in giving us the impetus to aim higher and create more opportunities, especially for women and young people in entrepreneurship. As I close, I would like to point out the following. We are making positive strides towards meeting our sustainable objectives, and this year we aim to achieve more and our C agenda because as our tagline goes, we believe it's possible. It can be. In collaboration with governments, private sector partners, and fellow Kenyans, we hope to build a stronger Kenya and South Sudan uh, organization. We thank you and congratulations to the winners of this year's USADF, Stanbic Bank Foundation grant uh, and Standing Bank Foundation grant winners. Thank you very much for listening to me. I take this opportunity now to invite uh, our chief executive, Mr. Charles Mudiwa, to come and uh, give his remarks. Thank you. Um, good morning. I know it's cold and it's a, a difficult for a lot of us to even say good morning, um, <clears throat> but I hope we are all warm today and I want to say thank you very much for joining us today. Um, like a, I want to recognize the presence of our directors. I will go to two of our board directors. Thank you very much, Director Rose and Director Wambui, to join us today. Um, I have to acknowledge them. This is mid-year. And my praise is due, so, so I must acknowledge them, otherwise my praise will not look very good at half year. <laughs> um, in absentia, until he joins us, our chief guest, uh, CSA, uh, we want to recognize his presence uh, when he comes in, then uh, we'll recognize, acknowledge him. Um, our partners from GIZ and USDF, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, the CEO of our stock exchange. Um, we need to make sure that our share price continue on the right path. So I acknowledge you. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, colleagues from the executive uh, of Stan Big Bank um, and our executive director for our foundation, I welcome and thank you very much for joining us. Um, members from our investment community and of course, uh, ladies and gentlemen, including members of the um, media. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, it's great to see everybody and thank you for taking the time this morning to be here to share with us about sustainability. I think the issue is that sustainability is a very topical subject um, today. I mean, we are all trying to figure out what's happening to our weather, even this whole cold that we are going through in, um, in this month and we're figuring out what can we do differently. Um, I was in London uh, three weeks ago, and it was raining and cold. And then yesterday, I told, they were saying, I saw the headline in all the newspapers from the UK, London is hotter than the Sahara at 41 degrees Celsius. I mean, what happened in three weeks? And, and we all can't understand why the changes that we're going through and how they're affecting us and what is coming next. 
We have no idea what our seasons are looking like, and we are all trying to grapple this issue. And it's all to do with sustainability, climate change, and the things that are happening around the world. And as a corporate citizen, Stan Big Bang strongly believes that we have to play our part in driving sustainability and ensure that we can pass on this, this, not just this company, but this whole world to the next generation. Because it is our right and our responsibility as the current stewards and occupants of this earth that we make sure the future generations also inherit something. One of the favorite statements I love is from our governor of the Central Bank, uh, Dr. Njoroge, when he talks about sustainability. And he always shares this story. And he says that in Ghana, apparently went there some time ago, um, an old man was planting cocoa plants, you know, the cocoa tree? And a young man asked him and says, old man, why are you bothering planting these trees? By the time they actually produce fruit, you'll be dead and long gone. And the old man says, yes, I know that very well. But what I also know is that I harvested trees and fruits that were planted by people who were dead and long gone. So it is my duty to ensure that your generation will be able to harvest trees. Because if I don't plant them now, you have no cocoa to harvest. And that is our responsibility. And so when you talk about sustainability, that's what it means for me. That we must plant trees and fruits for the future generations to be able to harvest. Just like the past generation planted fruit and trees which we are harvesting today. That's why we have a business today. The people who set up this business 110 years ago are long gone. But we have a business today we are able to share and experience and continue with. So that the next generation, 110 years from now, will still also have a business to sustain and have with. So at Stanbeek, we believe that Kenya is our home. We drive a growth. And that's what it is about. That this is our home. We must ensure it's sustainable. And we actually are driving a growth. Ensure that there's future sustainability for our young, for, our, for the future. In so doing, we look at three key principles that are important to our business. The first one is around being resilient. How do you bring resilience to things that we do and ensure that there's adaptability to the situations that arise? I think we've all gone through a pandemic at the moment and we all have to adapt to a new set of rules and new ways of working. The second one is relevant. How can we as a bank continue to be relevant to the communities that we serve? We must find solutions to our communities. It's not just about profit, but it's about purpose and relevance and being able to make impact into our communities. And we can only do that by finding relevant solutions to what we do. We cannot continue doing the things that we used to do ago when the world was different. We have to address the situations for now and the future. The third thing is about innovation. How do we continuously innovate our business to ensure that we adapt to the circumstances, but also find a new and more efficient and better solutions to the problems that the world is facing today? And in so doing, we therefore find fit for purpose outcomes for our customers and therefore the community at large. And in this way, by focusing on those three key pillars around resilience, relevance and innovation, we've identified seven key areas that we would like to focus on for sustainability. The first one is financial inclusion. Being a financial institution, that is one of our key and primary objectives. How do we widen financial inclusion? I think we talk about Kenya being 86% financial included. Why can't it be 100? And what must we do to include everybody and leave no one behind? And what are those things that we must do? So as a member of community, we certainly believe and support the UN principles for sustainability. We believe and subscribe to them. And we've taken steps to be a member of the Global Compact. We've also taken steps to be a member of the UN Women Empowerment Project because we believe that. We've taken steps to be a member of the Equator Principles and signed up for them as an organization. We've also taken steps to be a member of he for she at a global level, because those are things that drive sustainability globally. And they stand big. We are part of the global environment, and we must join those organ memberships. So financial inclusion is important for us. 
And to date, we targeted women as financial inclusion. We've onboarded 29,000 women and given out over 4.1 billion shillings in lending targeting to women in specifically. And we see that number growing as part of our drive to include women into the development agenda and see growth. We have also established um, you know, government and bilateral partnerships with about five, eight counties now where we're working with them around financial inclusion and bringing more people into the financial markets and including that they are, they are included. So financial inclusion is something that's important for us. The second thing that we focus on in our sustainability is job creation and enterprise development. Unless we create self-sufficient enterprises and self-sufficient individuals and create jobs and opportunities for our young people, we cannot be sustainable. And in this regard, we've targeted particularly SMEs as a key focus area. And to do this, we look at SMEs in three dimensions. The first one is we give support, what I'll call social support. And one of the things that we've done is partnered with our colleagues from GIZ here to give what we call catalytic grants to start up the, 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 the SMEs. And what does that mean? We're aware that during COVID, a lot of people were affected and in fact, a lot of Mamamboga, I mean, couldn't trade. Remember, there was a time when it shut down. And as a result, when there was a shutdown, they couldn't trade. And what did they do? If I use a vernacular word, allow me, they ate the capital, literally. Because they had no other way to do it, they had to eat the capital. Now, when they ate the capital, we opened the markets. They had nothing to start with. And so our fund and our partnership with GIZ is to now give them that capital they aid so they can start. And we are giving these grants, which are, well, they're not grants, they are soft loans, which are about between, um, well, uh, it's not zero, let's say 10,000 to 50,000, which allows them to restart. And we give them a 2% per annum. So if you think about it, where else in Kenya do you get money 2% per annum? Except a stand big. And the whole objective here is that we allow the two percent is an administrative fee which allows them to be able to restart, recover the capital, and be able to trade. And we've started doing this in a number of counties. I know Nakur is leading, and we Meru, like Kipia, we've done Kisumu, we're going to Eldoret. I mean, so we see this as a big stride in terms of assisting the women particularly, and also a lot of young people to restart these small businesses. So when you think of SMEs, we are looking down at the lower end of the SMEs, where do we start? Then we go up to the next tier of SMEs where we're giving them some grant to start up. And these are SMEs that have started up now, but they now want to expand and grow. Because one of the challenges of SMEs is that they get to a certain level, then they want to progress. How do they grow to the next level? And we're giving what we call catalytic funding, which allows you to grow. Now, this one is a grant. And for this one, we've partnered here with our friends from the USI. Um, I was getting this wrong. USIDF. Okay. USIDF. And what we have done in this regard, so for the first one, we've given out 33 million shillings so far, and we expected this to grow. The second one is now USIDF. We're now looking at those who are looking at expanding. Now, how do they expand? They now need to look for new markets. So they've got a business that's growing, and they are now looking for new markets. Some of them are sitting in this room today, and we'll be giving some of those grants today, so you get to see them. And the whole idea is that we want to allow you to grow, and we're giving grants up to 5 million shillings. This is a grant. You don't pay it back mahala. Now, where else in this world do you get 5 million shillings for mahala we don't pay just to allow you to grow? except at Stanbeck. And we want to thank our partners as well for coming to support us on this. And to date, we have given 107 million shillings of this amount of money. And today, we are giving another lot to people who are here today. They can wave at me, those who are here today. You can see them. They are here today. So if you think it's fake, they are here. Talk to them. <laughs> so... We will be giving this out and supporting. This is now to allow you to grow because we do realize that we have to accelerate your growth. So the whole theme and drive is how do you accelerate businesses as part of our enterprise development program and job creation. 
And we're doing this with our partners, as I've said, from JZ and USIDF. So that is the next level that we're looking at. Now, once we have gotten a new, so we've given you startup capital to get you to start as a mamamboga. We now give you expansion capital to get you to the next level. The third tier is you are now commercial. You are grown up. I mean, if you are my son, we ask you to leave the house and go and find your own home. You are already grown up, but we will still give you support, which is commercial lending, which we now do as the third level of support. And we have a number of programs here, but chief among them is what we call Mjeki, which supports you to either be able to be a distributor or to be able to find your money across. And we have given out 19 billion shillings of that money, which now allows you to get wings and to get out there and be yourself. So we have all these tiers that we've given out across the levels and we keep growing this business and the support businesses. So for us, entrepreneurial development and SME growth is real and we are actually taking meaningful real steps to actually address that. And we believe that by so doing and addressing the different tiers of our SMEs, we're able to catch everybody and ensure that we're doing that correctly. The third objective that we have under sustainability is infrastructure development. And Edwin highlighted some of them, that the work that we're doing around infrastructure, we've provided guarantees for the Moja Express, as he has indicated. We provided guarantees for the SGR, for Thika Highway, and a whole lot of other infrastructure projects. We're currently doing the annuity program of roads for the Lapset project. So we are involved quite a lot in the infrastructure development as part of our sustainability to ensure that we've got the roads, we have the infrastructure that allows us, we're involved in power generation through a number of independent power producers, which we finance wind energy in particular. We've financed three wind energy projects um, that we've gone out there to support some of the initiatives around this. And we will partner with the different agencies, chiefly here with the Kenyan government, to ensure that we create infrastructure. That's not just infrastructure, but sustainable infrastructure to ensure that we see development. And trade and investment, we continue to support distributors and we see trade, particularly from the East African community. We launched what we call borderless banking, which allows integration of East Africa and allows our clients to have a seamless experience when they trade across East Africa without having to feel that, I mean, we call it um, one system, four bank, of one bank, four countries. So you can trade seamlessly within Stanbic across East Africa without having to feel the hindrances of a border. So if you've got your account in Kenya, you can, tr you can go and look at your account and balances in Uganda without having to say, oh, I'm from Kenya. You go to Stanbic, Uganda, you can trade. You go to Stanbic, Tanzania, you can trade. Stanbic, um, in South Sudan, you can trade. That allows us that seamless across to see that people can be able to trade across the borders continuously. In terms of environment, some that we are passionate about, that we look at and consistently support. And in this regard, we did the 1.4 billion shillings Acorn Green Bond, which was the first green bond done in East Africa, dually listed on the Nairobi Stock Exchange and also on the London Stock Exchange as the lead arranger for this facility. We're very proud of that achievement, that we're championing green financing, but also more importantly, the purpose of the financing was to provide student accommodation. So over and above just doing providing a green financing, we're also providing a social need, which is student accommodation and providing housing for those students who are struggling to find accommodation. So we are part of that journey and some that we're proud of to have done. Then of course health, we focused on cancer, as part of the, one of the big things that we need to address. And our big focus here is about cancer screening. We have, to date, screened 10,012 people across the country, and we continue to do that. The target is that by the end of this year, we want to screen 50,000 people in Kenza as a key driver of how we can help drive. My plea here is that men, please come to be screened. I know a lot of men don't want to come, and I know we always see women in this group, and I'm humbly requesting that men, we know there's prostate cancer there. Please don't be too embarrassed to come out and do it. For some of us, if you're above, if you're on the above the fourth floor going up, you know what I mean by the fourth floor, eh? Yeah, if above the fourth floor, it's an annual thing that you must do. And I humbly and simply request that as much as possible. Let's encourage also men 
to go out there and be screened, especially for prostate cancer. It's just as important as getting the women to do breast cancer and other things that they're screening for. So we offer screening for cancer, and if you want to go through that process, our teams are here. They can facilitate that for you because we believe it's an important thing for us to do. And cancer is one of the major killers that we see coming across the globe, and we must address this. And so for health, our big focus is around cancer screening, ensure that we deal with the cancer issue. So let us all encourage ourselves to this process. Um, I would like to acknowledge uh, our chief guest as he comes in. Thank you very much. Our CS has finally arrived. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, and I'm very happy you came at this time because I'm finishing my speech. Um, <laughs> And I did not mention anything about the ministry, um, so you are in very safe hands. The last focused area for us is education that we focus on. So for the benefit of our chief guest, uh, we've highlighted that our sustainability areas are around financial inclusion, uh, job creation and enterprise development. Uh, we explained some of the work that you do, which I know you're familiar with, with SMEs, with uh, GIZ, with USIDF, supporting some of the SMEs that we work, the MOUs that you've signed with yourselves, um, and how we've created that. Um, and then, of course, um, trade and investment, some of the work that we're doing around uh, cross-border activities in terms of development, the environment and climate change, and then health, we're doing cancer screening. We've screened 10,000 people so far. We hope we can meet 50,000 by the end of this year. Um, and now I'm speaking to the last part, uh, which is education. And you've come in at the right time. We've signed an MOU with the Ministry of Industry and uh, Industry, Trade and Enterprise Development around education. And with one of our partners as well, Microsoft. And what we recognized when we had the discussion with the ministry was that during COVID, we had almost over one million people were retrained. And what we realized is that to get these people back into the job market, they need new skills. And we, we have to find new ways of providing skills for them. So in partnership with the ministry, with the Microsoft, we launched what we call Future Need Digital, which is a program where we are planning to train at least 500,000 people by 2025 in new digital skills. And the whole idea is that we train them across the whole country. So the ministry provided its training centers in all the 47 counties. Stanbig is providing computers. We have so far given out 475 computers in different training centers across the country in different counties where we are training. And then the idea is we have got then young people coming Then We are training over 1,000 trainers from the ministry who will be training facilitators to provide training for young people across um, the country. To date, we have trained 50,000 people in all in eight counties who are getting skills and getting globally recognized certificates from Microsoft for actually going through this training. And they, this, this program starts from basic things like understanding what a computer is, what is a keypad, what is a mouse. It's not that thing that you go and catch. Um, it's a different thing. And all those things. And then, of course, up to the point where you're actually doing coding. We've got some young people who have actually got jobs abroad coming from this program who are coding for global entities and getting skills that are actually allowing them to do this. So we are very happy with this program. And like I said, we're 50,000 people have gone through this program and they've been certified and are now ready to do new challenges in terms of learning to do that. The target is to make them 500,000 and we're aggressively driving this that we actually can meet this target. Hopefully this year we want to get 100,000 and then we progressively grow that number. So education is an important part for us. But we also have another partner, Palmer's Foundation, where we're also giving scholarships every year to young people to go into secondary education. And these are young people largely from disadvantaged areas. So people are sitting in this room, I'm not quite sure your children qualify, so please don't apply. But those people who are also in the lower echelons of our society who need this support but they uh, cannot go forward. So we are partnering with Paramount Foundation to be able to support that. So as we look into the future and look at sustainability, we believe that start begin the right place. We continue to do our job and we continue, as I said at the beginning, to plant the cocoa plants or if you want to call it the tea plants to make sure that future generations can continue to harvest the fruit of our labor today. 
because our role is to be stewards of this earth so that future generations can inherit a better earth. And I want to thank you for coming to partner with us, working with us to ensure that Stanbic plays its role as a corporate citizen of Kenya, as a corporate citizen of South Sudan, to ensure that the world in future will be sustainable and a better place to live in. I thank you. Another round of applause to our chief executive. Let me call him our number one salesperson. If you're not banking with Stanbic Bank, where are you? So today we are telling about our impact story and what a challenge we have received there that we have to play our part in uh, driving sustainability. At this juncture, I want to uh, draw your attention to your screens and we want to tell our story. What is it that we did in 2021? so that you can continue having the flavor of what Stanbeck is doing. Someone says that if your, imp if your presence does not make an impact, then your absence does not make any difference. So here at Stanbeck, we believe we are making an impact, and I draw your attention to the screens to be able to see what we did in 2021. With the introduction of NAYO, it will help me expand my business because I understand I'll be able to do more transactions globally and locally. Niliendana ile biashara na nikawa nakodisha gari za watu. Dada alipokuwa alipoingia Mombasa, mimi nilikuwa mmoja wao. Sasa hii niko na gari gapi? Tano za dada. This is a very good initiative that uh, Stanbic Bank is doing because it's helping companies like us to at least expand and also try to see how we can work with the local people to improve on their livelihood. I had nowhere to go and my destiny was in total darkness. Stanbic Bank came as the light and I was now able to see my future. Really, really helped me. I remember how supportive the relationship manager was. It took like almost two weeks for everything to be cleared. What we see guides what we do. And for Standbeck Bank, solving Kenya's and South Sudan's needs spells success. We saw the pandemic shake the economy and our people. So we rose to the task of bringing stability to the people we serve through SEE, which is our social, economic, and environmental approach. Our goal being to create value that makes life better for Kenya and South Sudan by creating profitable ways of doing business and be a catalyst of economic change. This is through our key SEE pillars. We see financial inclusion as an anchor to growth in and beyond the region. We continually work to implement accessible and affordable digital and lending solutions, affordable mortgages, savings and insurance for individuals, entrepreneurs and businesses alike, while providing consumer education that helps them make informed decisions. Ongoing COVID-19 support that helps the growth of SMEs through loan restructuring and investing in strategic partnerships to support our clients as they leverage value chains and position themselves for growth is what our job creation and enterprise development pillar is anchored on. This is not only an outward-facing push for accelerated growth, but inward too, where our staff have been supported to upskill and expand their horizons. We see SMEs playing a critical role in infrastructural development, so we offer them lending facilities that see them punch above their weight. At the same time, we offer support to government initiatives like the Nairobi Expressway and various energy-related projects. For trade and investment, we continue to create new routes to market for our clients so that success is theirs to see. Climate change is a reality we need to face, and by creating sustainable finance that empowers clients to make informed decisions around climate risk and increase the capacity of our energy sector, we take a step in the right direction. Education for us goes beyond the classroom and leads right to our doorstep. 
where we support our staff to serve our clients better while providing them with financial literacy tools that will see them grow. When it comes to health, we support the government through provision of resources and communities through health screening drives while protecting our staff as they serve the people we love. Kenya and South Sudan are our home. We drive their growth. There you have it. It is just not stories. It is happening on the ground. It is about resilience. It is about innovation. And it's also about relevance. We continue to see what Stanbic Bank is doing. And at this juncture, we are going to shift gears and highlight uh, what our partnership with USADF has been all about. And to introduce this segment, I want us to introduce our head, uh, executive director and head of foundation, Pauline Bayer, even as he introduces the team from USADF. Put our hands together for Pauline. <laughs> Just like Charles, it is, it's that time for media appraisal. And so it gives me great pleasure to welcome my boss. <laughs> good morning, good morning everybody. And I'm glad to see our Chief Administrative Secretary and a friend of Stanwyck, Honorable Siani Karibu Sana, our friend from the Stock Exchange, always, always supporting our C agenda. Thank you, thank you for coming. Our directors, the lady directors, Wamboi and Director Rose, thank you. Our KLC colleagues, Kenya Leadership Council, thank you, thank you for coming and supporting the initiative. Our grantees, Asante Nisana, today you are the center of what we do. Our partners, USADF, GIZ, very glad you could come. Very glad that we are here today demonstrating through our partnership what we can do for the Kenyan economy. Mine, also members of the press, um, Karibuni Sana, always a pleasure to have you in the room telling our story and taking us to greater heights. Our chief executive, I'm bringing you last, I didn't forget you. You are the champion of C. You have set up, you've, you've actually grown the cocoa trees, Charles. You've planted the cocoa trees. We are living testament that you've planted the cocoa trees. Whatever we do, we are doing for a generation of the future. A lot of it will be there beyond our time. What we'll demonstrate, as you've seen with the school children, it's not about us. It's about how we touch communities, be it education, be it job creation. To our grantees who are starting business, some of you expanding. I know some of you we've related. We have corporate people here who've become entrepreneurs. You keep encouraging us. I'm sure you will see one of them who's now making juices. And I'm sure, Waziri, you will get to have an, a flavor. We thought we'd make you come last so that you have a flavor of the agenda that you so passionately push, which is supporting small businesses. So mine this morning is very, very brief, just to ask that Timothy joins us to the podium. Timothy, the partner in crime in supporting the narrative of small and micro enterprises <laughs> development. So Timothy came to Stambik about two years ago. We sat at the newly established foundation offices. And uh, within less than one year, we had a program of $10 million that is looking to support SMEs over the next five years. We have gone, and I'm also acknowledging the other USADF and USADF partner colleagues in the room. You can just wave your hand so that we all know we are in the room. I'll also acknowledge EY, that is also a partner when we do the competitions. I did see somebody from EY, the young gentleman, the youth, right at the back. Thank you for coming. EY continues to partner with us, and we are looking to do more with you. So I think mine is very, very brief. So much talking has been done by Stanbic. I will now allow Timothy, our partner from USADF, to give some talk. And then we take you to the next, which is really celebrating what Charles has said leaving our purpose. You will see this amplified through the businesses that we are going to be announcing. 
most of the businesses here, and Timothy can talk to the lens that we look at these uh, businesses, have a lot of innovation in them. Most of them are relevant in the communities, I will not mention, but you will see very innovative businesses that are working, for example, with uh, the market traders at Parklands Market, using technology to supply. You will see businesses making juice. Again, you, you, I will not, um, I'll just give a few. But I think for me, it's a great uh, pleasure to welcome Timothy and uh, say that uh, the floor is yours. We have spoken. There's three of us who've already been on the podium. So let me give this to you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Pauline. Good morning, everyone. Uh, our chief guest, the CS, um, the chief executive of uh, Stanbic, uh, board members, invited guests, uh, the media. It's difficult to speak once Charles has spoken <laughs> uh, because he covered a lot of ground as far as the work we do is concerned. Let me start by bringing uh, greetings from our president and CEO of USADF, Travis Atkins. We expected to have a video uh, from him, uh, but unfortunately, because of his current travels, he wasn't able. But he sent me last night a message that I want just to read very quickly. Um, Hello, my name is Travis uh, Atkins, and I am the President and CEO of United States Africa Development Foundation. We are an independent US government agency established to support and invest in African-owned and African-led enterprises that improve the lives and livelihoods of the people in Africa. Today, I'm honored to congratulate the winners of the second and a Prenua pitch competition and a consideration to receive grant funding as part of the partnership between USADF and Stanby Kenya Foundation. USADF first partnered with Stanby Kenya Foundation in 2021, a partnership based on the shared commitment to provide grants to micro, small, and medium enterprises, cooperatives, and producer groups in Kenya. These entrepreneurs underwent a rigorous selection and screening process before being chosen as pitch competition winners, and we are proud of the work they have put in to arrive here today. With the joint support of USADF and Stanby Kenya Foundation, they will have the opportunity to create opportunities, income generating activities, and prosperity for themselves and for those around them. On behalf of the USADF, my sincerest congratulations to the 12 winners. We wish all the best as you continue to make an impact in communities and across Kenya. Uh, having read the statement from our president, I want to say that this is a very joyous moment for us at USADF. For the last 40 plus years, we have been giving out grants to SMEs and grassroots enterprises, cooperatives, and producer groups in 22 African markets. And it is when we started this partnership with Standback, with Standbeek, that we saw new dimensions of increasing the impact that we are making. Because grant funding can only go that far. Enterprises require ongoing investments that USADF is not able to provide, and therefore the partnership that we have with Standbig gives us that opportunity for the SMEs to scale the work that they are doing. When we started last year, we had, as it was stated before, uh, 13 SMEs that were approved for grant funding. They received a total of 33 million uh, Kenya shillings, which is equivalent to 330,000 US dollars. Uh, this was a big start. We had expected to award only five uh, SMEs, but we ended up uh, almost doubling that number. When we came to the second cohort, 
we saw a tremendous uh, growth in terms of the quality of the applications that we were receiving. While we celebrate 12 SMEs this morning, I want to draw your attention to the fact that we had more than 25 SMEs that were shortlisted that presented themselves for the pitch competition. And it's not that the others were not good enough. Actually, to mention that Stan Big was able to identify more than six SMEs that were investor ready. And they have already given them investment capital in terms of loan. This to us is great success. And why do we consider it great success? Because through the partnership, Stand Big has been able to provide uh, capital to these SMEs that would otherwise continue to struggle to grow their enterprises. USADF as a US government agency, we provide three types of services to the SMEs. One is the grant capital. Secondly is the technical assistance which is provided by our partner organizations across the 22 African countries where we operate. And I'm glad our partner, Zesam and Associates, represented by Lydia Kimani, is here today. And these are the people who provide ongoing hand-holding and taken core support so that the SMEs are able to utilize the grant capital that we give them and they are able to track the implementation of activities and evaluate and give us feedback in terms of where we can improve and where we can grow. The third service that we give is convening because we understand that TA and grant capital is not all that SMEs need. They need access to markets. They need to uh, attain certification. They need to um, be linked with other service providers. That is something that we do at USADF. This morning, uh, as we celebrate our winners of the second cohort, uh, we want to say that as USADF, we are looking at growing this partnership so that we are not just reaching 12 SMEs, but we are able to reach 40 SMEs. We are able to reach hundreds of SMEs, not just in Kenya, but in South Sudan. That is where our next move uh, we are looking at, South Sudan and uh, Uganda in partnership with uh, Stan Big. Uh, because today is not just for USADF, it is for the SMEs. I don't want to steal the show. I want to give an opportunity for us to celebrate and to see what these SMEs have gone through uh, to get to where they are. And I would like at this point uh, to welcome all of you uh, to join us as we watch a short video uh, that highlight uh, some of these SMEs, both those who qualified and others who even received investment from Stan Big. Thank you very much and enjoy the video. Quite excited to have been a short start for this. I'm grateful to have come this far. We take it as a mileage. I'm feeling a bit nervous. It's the first time I'm doing this. I think you're fully prepared. I think I've done my homework enough. I'm here to um, be able to explain what Signup Education Institute Limited does and why we, uh, we feel that we deserve to get um, the grant awarded to us. We want to upscale our production processes and also to grow our market and increase the number of farmers we are working with. That's why we came knocking for that support. With the grant, it will help us uh, widen the scope of our business, increase the streams of our revenue. I'm going to present uh, my business in the right way so that at least they can, I can get a chance to get the knowledge, get the funds and uh, grow and scale up. I want to improve my facility. For me, it is uh, one of first of all is hoping to win the grant, but then I'd also be able to at least be able to showcase what we've done, be able to interact with some of the judges. Expectations is that the German millers will find an environment to energize it to the next level. If we succeed, we will take our business to a next level and to increase the impact we have with the communities where we work. Every time you get to sit down with experts in, your, in other fields, uh, you know, there's something that you live with. Sometimes it may not be the money, but sometimes there's feedback that you get from these experts that are able to make your business better. I'm hoping for the best. 
uh, because you have already a business that you have bootstrapped and uh, it's working and you're looking forward to partnering with USDAP and Stanvik towards accelerating it and making it uh, investment ready. The judges who are come, they, they let you speak, they let you think out through your, your thought process. I like the fact that they're very knowledgeable pretty much on what I'm doing, which was very encouraging because the challenges in terms of questioning was very thought-provoking for me. I would not be in a position to answer that, sorry for that, because uh, of the engineering aspect, I would have wished my colleague to be able to answer that. They made me think about more about my business. I should not take the, my field to be a field of helping people, I should take it as a business. I realized that I need to put more effort and focus more on the growth of the business. Uh, I was challenged about uh, the wider opportunities in the near future. I'm excited because I've also picked a few things from them that we're going to implement uh, in the business. The power of technology today is unbelievable. Comrades today is known worldwide because of technology. There are so many strategies that we need to put in place considering the potential that we have in the industry. We are also able to get a hard device on how to scale up our business and uh, on investor readiness. And a lot to take away from uh, what the judges have shared with us, especially on our, we need to improve on our marketing model. Nimefanya vile ambavyo nilikuwa nimejipanga kabisa, kufanya hata Mungu mwenyewe ndio ataamua sasa. I think I got quite some fans in there, you know. I got some people coming with us outside to just have a second look at our product. I can say definitely, from the look of the things, the farmers care, we have it. This is a great opportunity for young entrepreneurs like us, SMEs. It was a good exposure, and uh, I appreciate Stanbeck and other, and other stakeholders, the USDA, the USDF uh, Foundation, because of uh, uh, they see the need to support uh, the African entrepreneurs. All right, it is that time that we get to see our winners. And before we get to that, I can see the judges are in the room. One of the contestants said the judges were not that difficult, but I can tell you it was a cold, hot room because of these judges. So ladies and gentlemen, let's appreciate the judges who are in the room. Please just rise up on your feet. I can see you in the room. All the judges, all the judges. Thank you very much for the work that you did, even for being able to select the 12 winners, you can have your seats. So to help me just award this, I will call upon our chief executive, Charles Mudiwa, and uh, Timothy Nzioka on stage uh, to be able to acknowledge the first set of winners that we will announce today. So Charles and Timothy, you can join me on the podium. We wish we could tell all the stories about these winners. I take it very personal because I've been able to walk this journey with them and I know their stories. So today we will just give a very brief highlight, but I welcome you to follow us on our social media where we will post the stories of the journeys that these winners have had. But for now, we will just give a brief highlight of each and every winner. Our first winner is Africa Fruits and Veggies, also known as Soko Kijiji Groceries. <laughs> Africa Open Air Market supply over 98% of fresh food, in cons um, fresh food consumed in cities, the majority being sold by women, commonly referred to us as Mamamboga, as, as Charles was referring to them. They are considered informal with no skills that can help them. So Kokijiji is the brand name for Africa Fruits and Veggie, working with over 1,500 small scale traders at the City Park Market. And by digitizing their trade and connecting them to the e-commerce market across Nairobi. To receive their award this morning is their founder, Benson Wando, and his partner, who are going to receive a total of 50,000 US dollars, which is equivalent to 5 million Kenya shillings. Benson, uh, please come on the stage. 
You will also pose for a photo. They will come in between. They will stand in between the stand in between to receive this and smile for the cameras. Congratulations to Soko Kijiji. Our next winner, all the way from Mombasa, Kismani Healthcare Services. And what they are doing is advancing safe motherhood and care to women and children. Uh, they are located along Bamburi Road in Mombasa. Kismani Healthcare Services, please come and join me here, is a private hospital situated in Mombasa County. Um, the facility is a primary healthcare facility offering outpatient, inpatient services to uncomplicated cases, maternity, family planning, uh, well baby clinic, HIV care, TB and laboratory services to all populations. Let's appreciate Kismani Health Services for winning 50,000 USD, equivalent to 5 million Kenya shillings. Congratulations. Our next winner is Kijani Testing. Kijani Testing, located in Nairobi. Are they in the house, Kijani Testing? Yes, please join me here. Kijani Testing uh, Limited is a Kenyan startup that offers field testing, market testing, and after-sale technical support to innovators, manufacturers, distributors, and end users of clean, and renewable energy. Talk about sustainability. They are there. So they are receiving their award of 30,000 US dollars, equivalent to 3 million Kenya shillings. Congratulations, Kijani Testing. All the way from Siaya is our next winner. Our next winner is Blossom Health Essentials. This is a woman-led organization for all the dadas in the house. And their vision is to provide affordable, easily accessible, sustainable, and tasty healthy food alternatives that have been grown and processed in Kenya for consumption locally and global. Globally, Blossom Health Essentials processes flour from climate smart crops such as cassava, arrow roots, and sweet potatoes. Have you ever tasted that? Have you ever seen that? So, to receive the award all the way from CIA, congratulations to Bl Blossom Health Essentials. Our fifth winner is a techie company that is Pickup. Ntani. Those of us who live in Nairobi have probably interacted with Pickup Mtani. I saw them in the house. Pickup Mtani, are you here? Great. Uh, Pickup Mtani. Our goal is to provide, their goal is to provide affordable and reliable last mile delivery solutions to small and micro enterprises that sell online. They are doing this by levering on the share economic model of connecting one location with another by use of local shops. So if you want your uh, deliveries to be done, you can consider Pick Up Mtani. Congratulations, gentlemen. And our sixth winner is Mayungu High Vision. All the way from Malindi. These ladies are doing an amazing thing. Have you ever heard of ladies who own boats and now they want to own a vessel and employ fishermen? Yes, that's what Mayungu High Vision is doing. Their, their goal is to help eradicate poverty 
empower women and youth by creating employment opportunities and establish a sustainable and profitable women-led enterprises all the way from Malindi, Kenya, Mayungu High Vision Women Enterprise. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Charles and Timothy, for awarding these winners their plaques. I will now ask Pauline and Beth to join me on stage as we call upon the next set of winners. The coastal region is really uh, featuring this time around. And so our next winner again is all the way from Mombasa, and this is Natural Cha Energy. Did you know that you can get briquettes from coconuts? Natural Cha Energy mission is to contrib contribute to the, re re uh, the reduction of deforestation and greenhouse gas emissions in Kenya while creating a local sustainable industry that involves the local communities in all businesses aspects, thus benefiting the region economically. So congratulations to Natural Cha Energy who are also going with 50,000 US dollars. Congratulations. Another women-led organization. This is Api Culture Ventures. Api Culture Ventures Limited enhance honey processing for improved beekeepers' livelihood. They are a social enterprise committed to boosting household food resilience by reducing the number of food insecure Kenyans by supporting honey production as a business. And to tell you how serious they were in getting this, uh, this, um, this award, their founder, Pauline, was expecting a little bundle of joy as she was pursuing this competition. And just before she came to pitch, the little bundle of joy was here. And to add to the joy, her people represented her very well and they get to win 50,000 USD. Congratulations, Apiculture. For the first time, we have a cooperative that is going to win. All the way from Machakos is Farmers Care Cooperative. Farmers Care Cooperative, our first um, cooperative to win an award. Uh, let me tell you about Farmers Care. Farmers Care Cooperative Society was established as a community-based organization and formally registered in 2013. The CBO comprised of six farmer groups with 117 members. They upgraded the CBO and registered as a marketing cooperative society in 2021. Their mission is to be the leading value addition and marketing producer cooperative society in Machakos County. So they're today they are winning 20,000 USD equivalent to 2 million. For the farmers in Machakos, let's appreciate them. Our next winner again is a women-led organization. I saw the, uh, our lead for Dada in the house, and I know she can appreciate the women that we are seeing winning this money. So Betana Ventures in Nairobi. Betana Ventures are making nectar fresh juice drink. They provide quality, authentic food to the community in a convenient and affordable way in order to enhance the quality of their customers' lives. Uh, they generate all its revenue from the sale of nectar tomato sauce, nectar chili sauce, nectar juice, and they are receiving um, an award of 30,000 USD equivalent to 3 million Kenya shillings. Congratulations, Betana Ventures. Our next winner is Delish and Nutri. Delish and Nutri, I saw you in the room.
They integrate farming and manufacturing of peanut powder and products. The Alicia Nut uh, Nutri Limited is a private limited founded in 2017 with objectives of offering households a nutritious, easy and affordable way to supplement their diets using locally farmed products. They process a variety of nutritious products, among them Uno peanut butter, uh, peanut powder, high iron beans, peanut uh, butter and premium roasted peanuts. Delish and Nutri are walking away with 50,000 USD. And uh, last but not least is Crafts with Meaning, another women-led organization. Crafts with Meaning are a social enterprise with the purpose of creating economic opportunities for disadvantaged artisans, mainly rural women, by leveraging on their creativity and hand skills. They do this by partnering with them and creating continuous work for them. They focus on those who are below the radar of conventional employment opportunities due to their social economic status. Crafts with mean, meaning are walking away with 50,000 US dollars. Thank you very much, Pauline and Beth, for awarding our winners. Let's all together put our hands together for the 12 winners. In addition to all these uh, things that we are seeing that, as you have seen, we have quite a number of the young people who are walking away with these awards and we are very, very honored to be part and parcel of this narrative in driving the agenda of Kenya. As we said, Kenya is our home and we drive her growth. Our story is of resilience, our story is of innovation, our story is of relevance. So ladies and gentlemen, it is now my humble request to invite our chief executive, uh, Kenya and South Sudan, Mr. Charles Mudiwa, to, uh, to welcome our chief guest, even as he addresses us. Welcome, Charles. Um, thank you very much, um, Faith, and um, I want to start by saying congratulations to all our winners. Um, it's stand big. We believe in what we call, you know, in the Bible, they talk about what they call three-dimensional growth, which is uh, you grow in what? In stature, you grow in wisdom, and you grow in fellowship with God, if you, if you are in the Bible. Uh, in stand big, we also believe that we must have three-dimensional growth. You must grow in size as your business. You must also grow in innovation as you get more, more knowledge. But you must also grow in impact as you impact and transform societies, which is our, why we are awarding these awards. And we want to thank them for doing that. Uh, for some of us, we only grow in one dimension, which is stature. I mean, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, especially some of our men, I mean, we only grow in one, one dimension only, at the front. <laughs> so so we, we shall not encourage that for our customers. We want them to grow in all dimensions. Um, and thank you very much, and congratulations for showing us what can be. But also what also impressed me is that a lot of the businesses are about young people, and therefore it shows the sustainability that we're talking about, that we are growing young generations for the future, and we want to thank that. My duty here is to introduce our guest speaker, a man of uh, huge accomplishments. Our guest speaker today is Honorable Dev Dosiani, and Chief Administrative Secretary in the Ministry of Trade, Industrialization, and Enterprise Development. Honorable Dev Dosiani, HSC, is the Chief Administrative Secretary for the Ministry of Industrialization, Trade, and Enterprise Development. 
is a consummate police analyst and communication specialist. His extensive multi-sector experience spans the areas of public policy, strategic communication, and government relations. He served as a special advisor in the office of the Prime Minister of Kenya in 2012 to 2013. He also formerly worked for Oxfam GB Pan-African Program as a government associate, as well as a news anchor for Kenya's leading news broadcasting group, the Royal Media Services, um, what, 96 FM. Mr. Osiane holds a BA in communication from the University of Nairobi, an MSc in public policy from the University of Bristol in England, courtesy of the prestigious Chevening Scholarship Program. He is also a UNEP Bayer Young Environmental Envoy awardee in 2009. Prior to his current role, Honorable Bosiani served as Group CEO of Crestwood Marketing and Communication Limited, a communication company based in Nairobi with assignments across the African region. He also has leading consulting roles with a number of multinational organizations such as PATH, UNDP, UNFPA, NIRAS, among others. It is my singular honor and privilege to invite our guests of honor, Honorable Dave Dosiani, to address us. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Charles, for that glowing introduction. I'm truly grateful to be here today. In moments like this, I forfeit speeches that have been written for me. I forfeit them because I think moments like this are moments for a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Moments to appreciate the talent demonstrated in this house. Moments to appreciate the commitment and partnership of friends like Stan Bick, alongside their partners like USADF. Moments like this are moments of pride for me, who upon my appointment decided that my only job was SME. Moments like this are moments of pride when I see young people and the great things they do. When I see people like my friend Caro, who owns Crafts with Meaning and whose story I relate with. I am shocked that she's here because I was having an appointment in my office with her after this. And she's an awardee. Moments like this go to show that when we walk this journey together towards the uplifting of our micro, small, and medium enterprises alongside friends and partners, then the sky is but just the lowest limit we could set. Moments like this of moments of pride. Charles, Pauline, I have been part of your journey of impact. I know when you say that 29,000 dollars have been onboarded and extended credit of about 4.1 billion, I know that you have journeyed towards our shared prosperity. When you speak about 33 million shillings now being given this grant to try and upscale, then I know that you are part of our shared prosperity. When you speak about committing 19 billion shillings towards supply chain funding, then it is not just a story. It is a story I know because I have seen you, walked and traversed with you some of the five counties where you've had impact. When Charles says that they have given over 450 computers to people across this nation, then it may look too small, but it is never too small because of the impact that one computer has towards many others that are going to use it because it's not going to be used by one person. And so I know it's part of our shared prosperity. When I sit here, 
and see the SMEs that have been beneficiaries here present and many, many others unable to be in this room because your impact would not fill up this room. It would bust on its seams. You would have nowhere to place us on this end of town. Then I know that the impact you have had is profound and true. Hearty congratulations to the micro, small, and medium enterprises who have been given grants this morning. Can we clap for them? When I saw Soko Kijiji and the two musketeers coming to receive their award, I was very proud because one of them was in university with me. I look at the stories told of the young lady trying to employ as many fishermen as possible. I look at the story of the gentleman doing peanut powder and butter. I see the story of the honey maker. I, you know, I'm married from Kitui, <laughs> the home of honey. I listen to the story from Siaya of the young lady trying to ensure that we have healthy food. I listen to the delivery solution story. Then I know that the team that was awarding these grants did a good job. But hey, to them who did not win, who are not part of the 12, you still are a winner for having gotten to the point of even being considered. All of you demonstrate that Kenya is not bereft of talent. Kenya is not bereft of the desire to create solutions for our country. Kenya does not lack capacity or capability. All we need are friends like Stanbeck who will walk with us and plug in where government may not be able to do everything. And government must then be a facilitator of the private sector. Last year, Towards the tail end, I was honored when Kepsa came to, the Kepsa team, SME team came and said, David, this day we declare you the SME champion for Kepsa. And I said, why is that? It was based on stories such as this and the desire to be a huge facilitator of policy for the growth of our SME sector. For the first time in the history of this country, the Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development, headed by my cabinet secretary, Honorable Betty Maina, who I ably deputize, has created the micro and small enterprise policy. And all of you need to go and have a look at that document. Because we want to try and work with our partners like Stanbeck and the foundation see how best we are able to leverage our partnerships for the good of both of us. The corporate sector has been known to be a selfish sector, all about profit, not much about impact. But when I see commitment from the corporate sector, as I have witnessed, seen, and can attest to, with Stanbeck, when I see the genuine desire to really create an impact. When they commit 60 million shillings and say this is going to be zero rated, there's no interest on it, and lend it to SMEs at 0%, then I see the desire for genuine impact, and that, for me, is what matters. We could make profits all we want, but that profit is not meaningful unless it touches the lives of mankind. The Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development. Through the very many agencies that we have, has created support frameworks and structures to be able to assist our SMEs. When I got into office, one of the things I learned was that so much was inside, so little known about them. I created what is known as the Biashara Tuesday platform, where I'd call all my CEOs for a conversation 
and go on Facebook Live and say, CEO for Kenya Bureau of Standards, sit here and tell Kenyans, especially SMEs, what you're doing for them. I want the SMEs to take advantage of our tailored solutions and support systems for the SMEs. If you are below 35, you know you can actually go to Kenya Industrial Property Institute, also known as KIPI, and your trademarks and patents will be done for free. If you walked to the Kenya Industrial Estates, we are attempting to ensure that you have dignified working spaces. So that if you win this 5 million shillings today, you are not going to start building a factory because you were paying rent. Rather, you could get even a cheaper place from where you can work as you utilize that resource to upscale, to buy more equipment. I want you to take advantage. Go to Kenya Export Promotion and Branding Agency, also known as Keprober. And learn where the markets are because we have a whole team dedicated for you to tell you, listen, what you're doing at Crafts with Meaning or what you're doing in the coast or what you're producing as peanut powder has a market in this place. Go and sell in Congo and many other places. That's what we are there to do. I want to thank Stanbic for jump-starting our SMEs towards this journey of success. I want to thank you, Charles, for your commitment. I see it. I feel it. I have been with you out there. I see your commitment when you speak. I see the commitment of Pauline. I see the commitment of the team. I know when it's real and I know when it's for show. A couple of weeks back while I visited Belgium, I met the CEO of BioInvest which is Belgium's development corporation, funding towards developing countries. And they said they had committed so many billions to Kenya. And I said, through who? Said through some commercial banks whose names I will not name. Stanbic was not one of them. And I said to them, at what rate did you lend them the money? They said at 3%. Hmm. And I asked, all right, what is it for? They said it's been given to the bank so that they can impact on our women and young people for onward lending to SMEs owned by women. I asked the global CEO of BioInvest, do you follow through to ensure that these monies are actually lent to these groups at the intended rates? Because 3%, I would hope that if they charge administration fees, it will be 2%. But the banks in question still lend at 15, 14, 13, 12, 11. And I said, did you really intend for impact? So when I came back, I was having a chat with my cabinet secretary, and we were both gobsmacked. And Madam Betty Maina said, this is why I love Stanbic. <laughs> it is one thing to say you're creating impact. It is another thing to walk the talk. That if we were to go through your books as a bank, are you able to testify that truly you want to assist these SMEs? Are you able to lend to them at rates that are friendly? Do you even have a paltry amount that's zero rated, no interest to support them? Are you able to work towards grants? I know the chief risk officer is here. One of the things I've told banks is, not all our SMEs will be able to afford collateral. And I'm glad we are talking financial inclusion. The biggest problem for our SMEs is their inability to get collateral. So the idea is there. The business is running. They want this money so badly. And if you afforded them, they are able and likely to make something out of it. And the chief risk officer and his team are able to see 
that if we threw in three million shillings into this business, even without collateral, this is a promising business. If we ensure that they have a proper governance structure, the output will be impressive. I am imploring banks to be able to keenly look at stories such as this. And sometimes, just leave out this collateral business for businesses you think make sense. And let's support the SME sector. Because I know you don't have grants like USADF has. But you can still lend to these SMEs without... You know, the biggest thing about financial inclusion is access. Why do our SMEs end up with MFIs and end up with their roofs being taken away and their cars being taken away and, and the percentages of interest are 30, 40 percent? It's not because the banks are not friendly, but it's because access. Can they access that funding? By the time you tell them three months, let us look, let us see, let us value, an MFI shows up and for them what they need is the money now without knowing the risk. I always tell people that I once borrowed from an, an, an uh, MFI and I saw what is called a fire in my mother tongue. I relate with the daily challenges of these SMEs because I, in my private life, run SMEs. I am a champion for them I don't ascribe to the desired template of what ministers ought to and must say. This is what the financials say. This is how you have to line it up. I relate with the daily challenges of these SMEs. And so I feel impressed when I find partners like Stanbeck who walk this journey with us. I request the SMEs to visit our Kenya Industrial Research Development Institute, Kirdi. Go and tell them about your products. You know, honey is the most adulterated product in the whole world. We want you to sell that honey above, outside, and beyond the confines of our country. To take advantage of the 300 million market that the ESC has now provided and to take advantage of the 1.3 billion market that the Africa continental free trade area offers our businesses. When I arrived and we were having chats about Africa continental free trade area, I remember asking the big question, it seems to me as though this AFC FTA is all about the big boys in the sector. Where is the voice of the SMEs in the Africa continental free trade area policy? Have we looked at the capability of a small trader to be able to just start small but still satisfy a demand in Gambia, yet they are in Kenya? Or sell to South Sudan, yet they are in Kenya? To go beyond ESC, Ethiopia may not be within ESC, but there is a market in Ethiopia. Today I am a proud citizen. I know President Kenyatta would be too. But take advantage of the solutions we have for you. Go to Kenya Bureau of Standards, where we have now reduced the cost of acquiring standards by more than half for SMEs. Take advantage of that. Get your S mark, throw yourselves out there. For people like Caro, who have been participants in Agoa, this is just the lower limit. Each one of you, the winners and non winners alike, are treasured. And we love you. And Charles, since you love the Bible, like I do, thank you for living up to the biblical word to whom much is given, much is expected. Over and above that, as I say, there are eight Beatitudes in the Bible. You know the Beatitudes? Blessed is the peacemaker, they shall be called sons of God for the Christians. The ninth beatitude, and this is not blasphemous, God forgive me. Blessed is the speaker who speaketh short, for he shall be invited to speak again. God bless you and I wish you well today. Thank you.
in moments like this, what a joy to come this far and thank you very much to our chief guest. I'm going to humbly request you, our Honorable Osiani and our chief executive, Charles Mudiwa, to join me on stage as we finally unveil our report to Society 2021. Charles. Yes. And as they make their way to the stage, we will just watch the screen for a few seconds and we will finally unveil this report. copy of this report so let's appreciate that congratulations to each and everybody who has taken part to be part and parcel of this journey I will invite my colleague uh, Priscilla After this, we will be doing official photos. Yes, we will have official photos after this. Um, Good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, and congratulations to the winner. What winners, what a beautiful story this morning. So um, it gives me a great pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this event. As you've all heard, we've given our story. It's a beautiful story, a beautiful story of how we've walked our talk a beautiful story of how we continue to partner with the government and the different players in the market to deliver solutions, innovative solutions to support SMEs, to continue to support the health sector, to continue to support uh, various intervention through financial inclusion, job creation and enterprise development, and also to support the education sector for a better Kenya, a better tomorrow, and a better world at large. First and foremost, I would like to thank our chief guest, Honorable David Osiang, the Chief Administrative Secretary, Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development. And thank you so much for the immense support that you continue to walk the journey with us. As you've heard, we continue to partner to support um, job creation and enterprise development and SMEs together with the government. I thank the chief executive of the Nairobi Securities Exchange, Mr. Geoffrey Odundo, 
Thank you so much for gracing this occasion and for your time and support and also as you continue to keep us honest in what we do through Sustainability Matters. I thank our partners, uh, Mr. Timothy Nzioka from USDF, Mr. Luis Bosch from GIZ for the partnership with Stanbic that is helping us continue to advance our financial inclusion agenda. I would like to thank the Chief Executive of Stanbic Bank Kenya and South Sudan, Mr. Charles Mudiwa, our board members, and the executive leadership of Stanbic Kenya for their guidance, their support, and their stewardship throughout this journey. I would like to thank our investors, our partners, our customers, Stanbic staff, and also members of the media. I thank all distinguished guests present here and those who have joined us virtually. And last but not least, I would like to thank my colleagues who have worked tirelessly to ensure that this day is a success. Thank you, Pauline, Faith, and team, and the Stanbic team. I would like to also um, thank our hosts, Fairmont, Norfolk Hotel, and all the service providers who have also greatly supported our success story. Once again, thank you all, and let's continue to build a better, brighter, and sustainable Kenya and world at large. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. SMEs are key players. Priscilla, in our official program has come to an end. Uh, we are no longer on the social medias now. So we will do a brief session for photo sessions. So I will ask our chief guest, our chief executive, to come back on stage. Uh, we want some clean shots for the media. We have some photographs with all our USADF winners. And thereafter, I will release our chief guest and our chief executive for some media interviews, even I'll also The next shot.